Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 160. I'm Cam and this is Julie. This week's Torah portion, we're at the end. I mean, we're finishing the portion of all of Deuteronomy and the rest of the book. So, chazak, chazak, right? May, May we, we be, be strengthened. strengthened. Um, so, basically, it's chapters 33 and 34. Um, you will not see it on the Torah portion section that's being told because that's for this week which is Sukkot. This would be being read at Simcot Tour, but we like to do it kind of as its own piece. Right. Um so that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing this week. And then we will start with Genesis again. Next week. Oh my gosh, what? it's crazy to think that's already here. And we're also going to be doing Acts. Yes, Julie's going to do the book of, of the Acts. Apostles. Yeah. So that's going to be really neat. And you may be going in a whole year, but when you really start to look at the extra historical pieces with it, yes. It can take a whole year. <laughs> I know. I've been going through it going, wow, there's this much for the first month. <laughs> I know. It's crazy, but it's got fabulous Give me lots to do. Okay. All right. Well, hey, if you want to check out last year's Torah portion on this topic of uh, Deuteronomy 34, 33 and 34, it was episode 114 A and B, and the year before that was 66 A and B. Yes. And um, just a quick little heads up. We are hoping that next year, starting with Genesis, we will be on a podcast. Um, we will still be putting it here at um, on the, the Shepherd's Rush YouTube, YouTube to, to watch. Uh, we're going to have some sort of live stream camera. I don't know how that works, but we're going to do something creative. Um, but we thought maybe if we would do, I uh, excuse me, uh, what's it called? Podcast. podcast. Then people can download and take us on the go. Um, wherever they would like to, and share us with friends who maybe need to download and aren't able to get onto YouTube. The last few years, we've talked about the blessing because obviously the beginning of this talks about the blessing that Moses is giving to um, the children of Israel. And I thought we'd look at it a little bit different. I thought the whole idea of blessing, like like who's the first person to bless, and and so if you go back to Genesis one, we see that the Lord blesses Adam and Eve. And actually, we see the Lord giving almost all the blessings. Okay, He blesses Adam and Eve. Then there's a Noah blessing, and then and then um, we start to see again the Lord's blessing. Then of course we have Abraham, right? right. And then um, Isaac and Jacob are blessed. And then we see the first at death blessing where they're sharing just before they die is with Isaac, with Jacob and Esau. Oh yeah. And um, so I just kind of thought, well. Who do we really see giving these blessings? We see Isaac. We see, um, we really don't see Abraham doing it. I mean, we know from, I think it's uh, Genesis 26, that Abraham gives everything to Isaac, but we don't see the act in which he does it, you know, like what that looks like. Not until Isaac. And then we see Jacob do it, and the next person we see is Moses. So I thought, you so know, no one we, in between, huh? right? Not that we're seen actually give it. So I thought that's interesting because while Moses, it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's not and Moses, right? Right. Yet Moses is placed in here. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Again, you have the first and the last. You have Genesis and you have Deuteronomy, right? And you kind of see that full circle. And I'm like, yeah, of course, because at the end we see Moses, who is the representative of the Lord, blessing Israel, the house. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Genesis, yeah. you have the very large right bait at first, the house. The whole idea when God made the heavens and earth was that he's building a house for his family. So Right. And who's the family? We find out at the end. So it's kind of like, okay. Comes in, full circle. Right. In Deuteronomy at the end, this is my family. This is who's blessed. And then, you know, they say the last word of Deuteronomy is Israel. Right. And so the Lamed is the last letter. And yet the first letter in Genesis 1 1 is the bait. And you put those together, you get heart. That's so talked funny. About that I just before. looked that up. Oh, okay. Before we, we came out. Yeah, yeah, well, we've talked about that before, but never had I thought about, ha, ah, and here's the residence of the house. Uh huh. So not only is it love, it's showing who he built the house for. Right. Who he, he created everything for. Israel, because that's his chosen people. Again, we're able to come in and be grafted in. So we too, he built it for us, knowing that we are going to be the ones, and I say we as in Israel, right. the people who are going to walk in his ways, um, church, Israel, all that together, okay, that we're going to be the ones who said, yes, I want to live in your house. So anyway, I just like the way it goes for a full, full circle. circle, and I yeah, hadn't absolutely. thought about that until here's the residence. You know, right. it's the, what is the, 
you know, yeah. here's the steeple, there's all the people, right? Yes. So here's Genesis. Oh, Deuteronomy. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's Genesis. Here's Deuteronomy. Oh, yeah. Here's there the heart. Go. There you go. Open oh, it. What? Oh, look, it even makes it the is, heart. yeah. What? Open it up. There's all You're the people. You're a genius. I love it. <laughs> Another quick highlight that I saw, and I was like, oh, that's cool, was 33 verse... Um, uh, two, which we've talked about in previous portions, and it talks about the thou, the excuse me, the ten thousands of the holy ones, and yeah. who that is. So here was another thought: was you know when we go to um, verse seventeen of the same chapter thirty three, it speaks of and they are ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are thousands of Manasseh, and I thought, huh, yeah. I ten love thousands. that ten thousands, and he uses it ten thousands here. I'm not saying that's just of Ephraim, but what I mean is that's, to me, kind of a code word. Hey, the hey, it's everybody. <laughs> yeah, everyone is involved in this. Ephraim and Judah are brought back together as one. Right. Also, in Hebrews 12, 1, I was reading that, and I went, oh, because after all of Hebrew 11, which, you know, that's the Hall of Faith, right? It gives all the people who walked according to the Lord oh, yeah, and yeah, waiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in 12, it says that we have such a cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That cloud of witnesses refers to the the verse above, chapter 11, which is all those that, who were given the, hall the of fame. fame. Right, the Hall of Fame. So I was like, oh. <clears throat> so again, to me, this even points even more to that this is Israel. I know we've talked about that in the past. It's just... You know, you like finding a little extra support, support, right? Little extra things that say, yeah, that does look like it's Israel, not just angels. Right. So, well, I love that it's put here with Ephraim because when it talks about Yeshua returning with his ten thousands, uh -huh. right? Oh, yeah. That, well, of course, Northern. because it's only Yeshua that brings Ephraim back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love right. it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So. That northern tribe with the, the two sticks are absolutely firmly together right. in the physical. Yeah. I like that. All right, so another little thing I saw was if we move down to verse 16, uh, excuse me, 6 and 7. So I was kind of seeing this, I guess, like little hints, little clues. Uh -huh. This yeah, is yeah. all for the future. And so we have in 6, let Reuben live and not die and let his men be numbered. And I thought, you know, Reuben means the man, the son. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh my gosh, Moses was the redeemer, right? Right. They get life because of the Redeemer. Right. I mean, Moses has to die so they can go into the land to continue on, just like Messiah had to die so that the Holy Spirit could come. Okay. Right, right, right. So I was like, what if one of the, you know, one of the many layers, uh -huh. okay. okay, what if one of the hidden layers here was the idea of let man live, let Adam, as in man, live? Because going through Israel, through Messiah, he will have life. Adam gets, remember, second Adam, he's right. going to get eternal life. He's going to live and not die. So yeah. I, I saw that as futuristic. And then the other thing I saw was in 7 where it says, and this of Judah, he said, hear, Yove, the voice of Judah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Remember, Simeon's not listed. We talk about that every year. Mm -hmm. But Simeon's name means to hear. Okay. And Judah absorbs Simeon. Uh -huh. And right. I thought, well, so basically, we have a little hint here uh -huh. that Judah, he says, hear Yahweh, the voice of the Lord. Here is basically saying, hey, you guys are going to, you're just going to absorb, absorb. You're going to hear. Uh, Judah's yeah, going to be hearing. Yeah, it used yeah. to be Simeon's job to hear, but now Judah's going to be hearing and praising. So his voice, right. he's going to hear and his voice is going to come forth. I just kind of thought, again, it's just yeah, a yeah, yeah, mid yeah. but I don't know. I just saw it was like, again. Like, again. What's like, that? Again. Like, again. Um, there, you're looking at the future. It means it's surely to be. Absolutely. <laughs> Another tidbit. This is the tidbit moment, our tidbit day. The other one was, let's move further down in 33. And if we look at verses 26 and then 29, I, again, haven't seen this um, combination until this week. Or if so, I forgot. That happens a lot of times. Okay. Yeah. But um, this is where it says, oh, Euphrim, um, well, Euphrim, which means like dear, righteous, upright ones. There is no one like El, riding in the heavens to help you, and on the clouds is his excellency. Okay, so there's none like you. You know, we see that in several places in the Torah. There's none like you. Um, we know that God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is unique, unlike anyone else. Right. But here's what's cool. 
when you look at 29, it says, Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you. Ah, yeah. A people say by Yahweh, the shield of your help. So here's God's uniqueness. He's going to help. And here's Israel who accepts the help. Right. And they're both who is like you. Who's like any, either of you. Yet the enemy is constantly trying to imitate those two. Yeah. You know, in, in uh, to imitate the living God by perverting and twisting. Mm-hmm. And to to pervert and twist what Israel is. Right. Who you know, are the Israel, Israel, right, people who are, are. Right. Who are they? And it says right here, they're the ones who are upright. Right. So the ones who walk in his way, right. who reflect the unique one. Yes. And if you think about it, that walk, that is unique. It is. It doesn't make any sense according to the way of the world. That's right. It makes no it's sense true. at all. So It's true. Again, his ways are higher. I can't tell you how many times people have said, God, why do you want to put yourself under that bondage? Right. Like, I'm like, what? I don't think it's bondage. No. No, 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 no. It reminds me of... Um, I was thinking about the diet that I do, the keto uh-huh. diet. Okay. A lot of people are like, oh, I could never do that. It's right. just so constrictive. It's right. such in bondage. But if you would have known me a year ago and seen the health that I was in and Not how by health. going, no health. right. And how by finally implementing that diet completely yeah. revolutionized right. my life. Completely freed you. Yes. That's how Torah is. I, I was it. under this, this constant sickness and oppression that I could not explain. No doctor could explain it. No, no one could explain it. Was it was awful. She couldn't eat. Yeah, it was It was bad. If you go look at last uh, two years, yeah. our doc talks, I was getting really, 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 really tiny because, yeah. like you said, I couldn't, couldn't eat. eat. But I think of it like the keto diet. It's taught me a lot. Yeah. That's While I point. do have to adhere to certain dietary restrictions, right. you know, even more so than the biblical dietary restrictions, right, right. What it's done for me and the opportunities it's opened up for me to live right. is it's just life. amazing. It's life. Yes. That's but how other people is. look at it and see it as death. As bondage because yeah. I can't have a cookie or I can't have right. a... Yes, I can't. I can have a keto different. cookie. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it tastes a little different. <laughs> <laughs> so in 27, um, back to this, it says, The Elohim of old is a refuge. And I thought of the word old. I was like, huh. So I looked up into ancient. Mm Because what I thought of was Jeremiah 6, where it says, return to the ancient Ancient paths. So I was like, huh. But that word is so weird. It's um, Kadim. I think that's how you say it. And it means east or eastwardly. Yes. Yes. I looked that up, too, from the east. So it's kind of both, you know. Yeah. So And I thought, well, of course, he rises from the east. Light comes from the east. All these things with the east. Mm -hmm. And that's the ancient one. And if you think about it, when Messiah comes, he comes from the east to cross, right? Isn't mm-hmm. that right? He comes from the east. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What, into the temple. Right. So you're going to have all the, looking for the living God from that direction, right? Looking for Messiah from that direction. And he says that he is the one of ancient, of old, the east. And I thought, I'll bet you, again, the end going to the beginning, that when the Lord spoke, uh-huh. let there be light, it came from the east. Oh, yeah, out of the Eastern Gate. Right. We have that in our book. I know book. we have it in our book, but I'm just saying, I have a reason you why already, I'm out scripturally. You already, you already knew that. <laughs> but to think it comes from the East, from the living God, from the days, the ancient one. And think about when we see in Daniel, it says the one of ancient, right? Mm-hmm. He's white. He's glowing. Yes. I'm like, right, because that Eastern light before the sun was the true unchanging light. You know, it is said that, and I can't remember where it's said, but some of the sages have said this before, that the reason it's positioned right here Uh about that word is because of where they were positioned um, according to Israel. They were east of the Jordan, and Uh the sun, Uh as in its representation of always rising in the east, was to represent right here... God in his full splendor and glory, which will be fulfilled more in the millennial time. Right, right. But right here, dawning on his land right. with his from people. From the east. Yeah. From the Ooh, east. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's mean, why that word was the used sun right here at the end. The sun is rising from them. We have right. Joshua in that role, which is a great, great slide over to the next point. Um, in 34, we have um, the presentation of basically Moses' death, right? And just like Messiah, who he can't be found in the grave, neither can Moses. You know, he is a representation. Again, whatever Moses does, Yeshua does. 
Moses was in perfectly good health. He basically gave up the ghost right. and body can't be found. Messiah, perfectly good health, right? Mm -hmm. Gave up the ghost, body can't be found. But we know from Matthew 17, they are hanging out together, you know, right. with um, Elijah. So In their perfect bodies. That's right. So <laughs> we know that, that Moses' body shows up somewhere. <laughs> right, right. He gets to use it again. So I just thought that was cool. Okay, so when you go down... Um, I wanted to show this about Joshua. It's in 9, uh, 34, 9. It says, And Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, and the children of Israel listened to him and did as Yahweh had commanded Moses. And then Moses, uh, excuse me, Joshua goes on to write in 10, And since then no prophet has arisen like, uh, excuse me, in Israel like Moshe, whom the Lord knew face to face. Okay. When you go to the next page, which is Joshua, mm -hmm. you find that Joshua never takes on a role higher than Messiah. Uh, excuse me, than Moses. In Joshua one one, it says, "And it came to be after the death of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, that Yahweh spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, saying, He still, even though the Lord we saw in thirty one, crowns him as next leader." Mm -hmm. the way Moses introduced him and the way Israel's supposed to see him is never supposed to take the place of Moshe. I kind of see it like for American history, um, George Washington. Right. Because, you know, everyone wanted George Washington to be king, and he's like, no, I'm not going to be king. And so that presidential role, while being given to other men after um, uh, Washington, was never quite seen in the same light as when Washington held it. So, granted, I'm not trying to say Washington was uh, perfect or, or <laughs> right. a redeemer, but in a way, he, <laughs> he did act in that role for yeah. our country. He right, did act right, that right. way. And he was God-ordained, and he was obedient to the Lord. I mean, he definitely did, in a way, follow this type of um, pattern, but right. not to be like a man of Messiah. You know. Right. And wouldn't you kind of say, like you said, God ordained. Yes. Um, that you can, when something is ordained by God, uh -huh. you can find it scripturally a pattern. Yeah. Yes. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, you I'm can. I'm trying to think of an example, but yeah. Well, David or, or even the idea of Saul who wasn't, I mean, the tribe of Benjamin was never supposed to be king. Right. But he was still ordained for that moment to show Israel, who said we want a king, what they really didn't want. Right. So he right. was still ordained for good or bad. And then we still see the pattern. When Yeshua does return and reveals himself to his brothers. Yes. Yeah. To um, the Jews. Right. That they will have this to say that. They'll right. say, oh, he does. Look, here's the pattern. Right. Oh, and when I was going through all the blessings of the different tribes, I just kept seeing, oh, well, Messiah does that. Oh, well, Messiah does that. And you think, you would think he would fulfill the Judah, but it's like, no, 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 no. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. He has to fulfill it all right. in order to save it all. Right, because if you remember, Israel is the firstborn son, mm -hmm. but so is Messiah. Right. So while right. he does, as the Redeemer Moses, he also has to do as the firstborn son because he takes on that responsibility and the, um, the inheritance. Yes. That Israel for the world. Yes. Yeshua for the world. And you know, I would say maybe even the opposite is true. Um, meaning, so everyone's looking for the Antichrist, right? So who's uh -huh. the Antichrist? Who's going to be the Antichrist? But he will also fulfill certain aspects of Scripture, but it won't be in a good way. Well, it'll be the Pharaoh. It'll and, be the uh, right, right, and, right, and right. the Saul. Yes, possibly. Yeah, yeah. We thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week with a new year of Torah portions. Shalom! Shalom.